give it up for the one and only Nixon. Hi guys, Nixie here today with another gameplay, non-gameplay commentary. I guess I'm not sure where this one would fall. A little bit of both, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Okay, so I'm going to dive in momentarily. I know you're looking at a black, blank, Unreal Engine screen right now. So for those of you, I'm sure that normally watch my stream, you've been wondering where is Nixit? Where is he? What's he doing? Has he just disappeared? The answer, guys, is absolutely not. I have not disappeared. I have not gone anywhere. I am currently going to make this video just to show you a little bit of what I've been up to. I'm not going to go too in-depth, but we'll do a quick run-through and maybe look at a little bit of the source code here and there. But I am in Unreal Engine. I have decided in the last uh, two weeks, give or take, <laughs> excuse me, I can't breathe every you guys know that, in the last two weeks or so, I've been spending a lot of time with the Unreal Engine. Uh, I am going to upload. Uh, I'm going to upload this for you guys to download and run through because I'm curious of how it runs on every other system. But I've just been playing with the idea of making a game, so I decided, uh, why not? Right? Why not just learn it? Why not just do it? So I'm going to run you through what I have and maybe show you a th few pieces of source code, but. Uh, I'm brand new, so don't get me wrong. There's going to be things wrong. There's going to be things that look, you know, mediocre at best. And there's going to be things that a professional would be like, oh, God. Uh, as well as if you guys want if you guys want to see code or see what I did, I'd be glad to show it to you. But you could find better tutorials on YouTube. I guarantee you that. That's where I've been kind of learning from is tutorials, uh, forum posts, etc. And then a little bit of just kind of learning on my own, messing around. All right, so we've already wasted two minutes. <laughs> so without further ado, guys, I want to show you what I've been up to. So I'm just going to go ahead and we're just going to play the game. We're going to go ahead and just hopefully my mouse is on screen. I didn't think to check that on my recording software, but whether my mouse is on there or not, we're just going to pop up here to the top and we're going to play from our uh, current camera location. It doesn't matter. We're going to hit play. And we're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and full screen it. So we're actually in Unreal Engine. I'm not running the game as a standalone, although I will be rendering that. It's currently uploading as we speak. So we're just going to full screen it and run it in here. So my frames will be a little worse than yours will be because I've run it as a standalone and it runs even smoother. But we want to see what we got. So i got a really basic menu here. I didn't spend much time on the menus because what's the point? You know, we're not going to use these in the end game. Just something so that you didn't immediately get thrown into the world. So there is a README included that gives you uh, some of that information, but since a lot of people skip over the README, when you hit play, you're going to be greeted with the world's ugliest message. Not the loading. This ugly message. Also, there's going to be a little bit of music in the background. Uh, hopefully that won't be too loud. It's a uh, EverQuest music. Hopefully I don't get flagged for that. I'll be really salty if we get flagged for that, but we'll just see. Welcome to Nixit's Terrible Game. Use watch and move, space and jump. V turns off my placeholder interface, and you can. Uh, we just want to see how the FPS runs for you guys. There are currently three zones to explore inside the cabin, outside the forest area, and the path through the mountains and the dark mushroom caves. So you can press V to delete that gross interface and home to erase that message. So hopefully you guys don't miss that. So this is just the inside of a cave, nothing special here. Uh, just a little bit of lighting. I was playing with lighting inside and trying to decide. It's still a little bright. I'm not fall. I haven't fallen in love with it yet. I did like how it's dark when you look down and kind of glossy at an angle. And I got I got a little bit of particle effect, some fire running that's got some sound and glow to it. But not counting that, we're just gonna go ahead and zone out. So I do have a fully functioning zone system. We're gonna go ahead and move through that and see what we can do here. So hopefully you guys will get a kick out of this. Those are my loading screens for now. <laughs> and there you go. This is my first outside zone. We Obviously the sizing is off, but that was our... We came out of that cabin, the interior. Got ourselves a nice another little fire with sound effects and functioning stuff. Some EverQuest music playing just for fun placeholder. Some particle effects up there on that. 
particle and smoke effects there. And it's really subtle, but you can see there's a flickering light in there to simulate uh, the, uh, with casting shadows, a flickering light that sort of uh, simulates the fire that's inside. Fully functioning lakes uh, with ambient occlusion, or not ambient occlusion, uh, depth of field to kind of smooth out some of those. And you can see that to make this run easier for you guys within the depth of field or even like that tree straight ahead of me, they have 2D models for when you're far away so that up close you get this uh, nice flowing tree moving with the wind like the grass down here. And from far away they're much less uh, demanding. I'm going to go ahead and disable the user interface just so we can get a better look here. Uh, I use that V key for that on mine. We're going to follow the path up here. Uh, we're going to skip that lake just because I have another lake that we're going to run through that has the same properties. Hopefully every, the volume's not too unbalanced. I haven't used this program in a while. It's not OBS. <laughs> so we're going to run through. Everything being through here just looks pretty normal. It's, it's fully built. You can run this entire zone. I love the way that we have that depth of field effect and the fog that kind of makes those mountains look realistic because you know it's like once you get right up close they need a little more shaping or even some static some meshing or some some rocks more bigger larger rocks like these over there by the way these are uh these do have collision on them i can't even get on this one because my guy's jump is so bad but there you go a little bit of floating leg there but still learning still learning Let's zone to our next area here. I spent a long time on that one. That was the first zone I ever built using a tutorial. And as we zone into here, we have our final zone of our three zones, which is kind of a, it looks deserty. It wasn't meant inherently to be deserty, but it kind of turned out that way. It's got a little bit more direct lighting. The other one's got sort of a sunset orangey yellow glow. Uh, this one's got more of this sort of uh, direct lighting so that the shadows are real severe and on when it's not sh shaded it's very bright uh i this cave was my first attempt at a cave and i decided to just screw it i found a better way to do it but i didn't want to take out the cave because i thought it showed my progress so originally i tried to do one of these but one of the things you'll notice here is that it's not shaded well there's no shadows it's not dark there's some holes in it that weren't really I could cover them up, but it wasn't changing the shading, so I'd have to run a full uh, effect panel in here. I wasn't a huge fan of that in general, so uh, what we did is I worked on a new one. Now, before we get to that new cave system that is in here, by the way, I'm running through the whole game here, so this is the path you should take while you're checking your FPS. Uh, this uh, here's a little oasis area kind of looks like the open first area got a little bit of fog in the distance and a little bit of that depth of field effect still kind of simulate the hot sun the water uh, both in both of them has a special visual effect so as you move into them the camera will actually adjust to obviously I didn't put in a swim animation yet but it does adjust to make everything blurry and blue so it gets that nice like effect as you sort of break the water and I like that a lot I was pretty happy with that effect um, it took me a while to get that right as well as if we go down under you can kind of see that it, it it also has that same effect up top kind of has a, a bluish effect blocking the world which would look better if we were actually swimming and then finally you can hear the wind and the music in the background, probably not super loudly if I'm lucky, but uh, I wanted to put those in just to test some audio triggers and get them running. Here is my actual dark cave. You can see it's very dark. You, can, you can't even see in from the bright light. And as you fade in, it is so dark that you have to give your eyes a second to adjust. Oh no, does that, I didn't fix that ever? God damn it. So you're gonna see our first glitch right here. You guys are gonna have this in your game too. There's a small area where you run up into the air. Something went wrong with a collision box for a static mesh. But it doesn't affect us. We can actually move through it, so that's nice. But it needs fixed. That's something I'll go in and fix later on. And if we broke that, for example, let's go into our editor mode. Uh, we'll open up our cave-in, which is what I call that level. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and turn our camera speed up 
and fade out of the level. Now we can go through the terrain and stuff, so you guys are going to see some weirdness. But uh, somewhere right in here, what's happening is the terrain underneath, possibly that terrain, or one of these big static rock meshes is just a tad too close, and it's causing a break. That's, that's exactly what's happening. It's probably this guy. It's probably this guy. Let's take him out and try and run from current camera location. I'm not going to do a whole lot of that. Full screen it up. Take off. Uh, let's go ahead and... Or actually, let's uh, let's play it with that on there. All right, guys. We'll run through this cave. This is my final area that I was just working on building today. Nope, that, that was not what was wrong, though. So, it must be the terrain underneath. I'll, I'll have to play with the editor a little bit and get that. It happens with the collision. It's, it's not a surprise, and it's not a problem. But uh, I got this nice... I decided to try a new form of lighting. So, like, basically, these worlds are not going to be my endgame worlds if we build a game. It's really just me practicing. So, instead of using torch lighting or something I've already done, I decided, oh, I'll try something new. So, I found someone that had some static meshes of mushrooms... And uh, we, we added an emissive texture to them to make them glow. And then added a light source over each one, which looks kind of like this. If you're, in the, if you're in here, you get this sort of a nifty effect where you can add a light in over these. And it gives that glow off the wall. And it just looks gorgeous. So, oops, let's not full screen until we actually play the game. Dive back in for one more run through here, and let's just run through the caves. You get these nice glows. I did purples and blues, which are just some of my favorites. It's different sizes, so these are some medium-sized ones. Uh, there's a little pack of smaller ones, a little bit littler on the left, a little larger on the right, with some nice glow. This is where I'm most interested to see your guys' frames, is if your textures and how these caves and these... Uh, mushrooms affect your guys' GPUs and CPUs. A big one right here in the middle of the cave that's kind of in the middle. There's a few ways through here, but you'll notice that some of them are blocked just to streamline things a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and run through the way I know is unblocked. There is full shadows in here, by the way. So every time you move towards these light sources, they do cast shadows off your character. Although subtle ones, not near as bright. There you go, some coming off my legs. And uh, they light your character, and they light the walls around them. And sometimes when they're meshing colors, not so much there, but we have a room here at the end that gives it just a really, really beautiful glow. Uh, right here, I love the way this purple and blue meshes together. And you could imagine a fight in here, taking out some mobs. These are pretty big as well. And I have collision off just so you can run through them. Obviously, that's a little unrealistic, but it's, it, it helps, and it makes it easy to just kind of look through. And as we round about here, I, I was a little unhappy with the lighting right here. Uh, this is getting close enough to the cave end exit that uh, these uh, you'll see the overriding. Uh, start. It starts to get a little brighter here than I wanted, but it's got this nice darkness in here. Vignettes on the corners of the screen that really darken it up. And then when you come out, you get this nice bright that almost kind of hurts your eyes as it adjusts. And we have another nice little sort of desert area coming out. And this cave is going to be to our next area to play when I play around. None of them are... These these areas aren't essentially cohesive. None of them are meant to be the sort of end game look that we're going to go for. But I'm really excited for you guys to play through this. I want to know what the frames go on. Uh, I want to see like if things work for me that didn't work for you guys. Like here, Here's like... oh, the, Obviously it's blurry because I have an effect on. But... Uh, they, they're just like uh, good size maps, you know, they're, they're each good size maps. They're loaded separately instead of in an open world format to make them smoother to run for now. I, I might play with level streaming and playing with an open world as well and dynamic lighting. Uh, by the way, the lighting is fully dynamic. I just haven't made a day night cycle. So if we go to my forest map, let's not save that since we didn't fix it. If we go to this forest map here, I know that I know the viewport's kind of small, but you can see if we go to our main light, which is up here in our outliner, if we go to our light source here uh, and rotate it, I have everything set to adjust with that. So if you watch the shadows and the lighting, we get this nice like, oops, it would be nice if I actually grabbed it, wouldn't it? There we go. 
we get this nice movable day night cycle and we can we can adjust that all ourselves and you can see the sun moves from right to left and to it gets a little weird when you're underneath but you could put it you could put it completely down take it out uh you can sort of uh, we're going to put it back you could take that source off completely as well as take out the skylight and make it very dark in here which we're not going to do for now but uh if you wanted to do a nighttime scene but anyway guys this is just a i know we're already 15 minutes in so i'm about to call it i wanted to show you guys what i have been up to because i think that sometimes you guys uh think that i just disappear right oh also one thing i forgot to mention when we ran through that i was really proud of yeah i just noticed it when we saw that you get this uh current camera location let's drop back in you get this beautiful sun ray i'm sure you guys noticed that we get the bloom and you'll notice uh as it comes through me or if we run up on some trees you get that beautiful god ray shaft they they come through they come through the trees they get those nice sh light shafts as they come through you or the things and as they hit you, you get the nice bloom and the bend around. It's just really pretty when you're in there all together. But um, this was just uh, something I wanted you guys to sort of be able to see just kind of what I've been working on and what I've been working toward. Obviously, uh, there's a lot of ambitious things you could do with this. My dream would be to make an MMO. That's a pretty bold thing. In fact, it's, it's looked uh, heavily upon as a very uh, dumb thing to do to try and run an indie MMO. So, and even then I couldn't do it without at least three or four other people. I would need at least one artist, one texturer, uh, probably one other world builder and somebody that could do animations. So at the very minimum, you would need like a three to five person team to do something like that. But it's if we're just talking dreams, I would love to do or be a part of an MMO. And uh, in the smaller thing, though, we could easily do something very simplistic with it. Uh, you can add in a combat system to this and have a sort of Dark Souls style game. Uh, you could uh, add uh, you could add a lot of different things. You could add a skill system and make it change the camera angle a little and play it more almost like a Dragon Age. Uh, like a Bioware game if you did some cut -sceneing, which is not as hard as, it, as you would think, uh, but still harder than I could do currently. But anyway, guys, I want to thank everyone for watching. I know this was a long video, so if you already if you made it through to this point, <laughs> thanks for being interested. Obviously, uh, if you are interested in some of the code, you guys can definitely let me know. I'd be glad to show you some. I'm not going to go through it mainly just because you guys mostly probably aren't going to care. But uh, I have it, like, for the zone lines. Like, uh, if you guys are curious how to make a zone line or things like that, I've been working on those. So we've got some nice code here that uh, runs through, you know, it, it, you just run the connections and it, it sort of writes code for you as you do it. Or you can write the code manually if you prefer. I'm, I'm a very visual person, so even the things I know how to do in code, I kind of prefer to do this way. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for everything that you do. I'm going to go ahead and call it a night and get ready to upload the files that I just showed you to my Google Drive and post them to our Discord. I'll link the Discord and the uh, Google Drive in the area below just so you guys can see everything. And I do want to give a shout out to both Paragon and Unreal Engine. I use some of their assets, Unreal Engine's default assets. Paragon has some of their assets free to use, as like uh, the, which was the character. And the music was from my favorite MMO, EverQuest. And it's just a placeholder. Obviously, you can't use that in a main production. But it was a lot of fun just to, <laughs> just to use because I love the music. So when I was running through, I was like, oh, I want to listen to something. All right, guys, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic night. And if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them on YouTube, leave them on Discord, or message me. So have a good night, guys. Or I guess if you're watching this during the day, have a good whatever time of day it is. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next videos.